Tolanyang is one of the missions that uh, that I say I really deeply fell in love with. Todanyang is a name that echoes in this country as an area of very terrible conflict. Young kids are being taken to be trained as soldiers. These young kids, they don't know how to write their names, does not know who is the president of Kenya. And they know that we have AK-47 and other type of guns in the world. Todanyang mission kind of demarcates the border between the Turkana and the Dasanich people. So many times we had to go and meet the tribe leaders of the Dasanich to try and convince them not to go and attack the Turkana. So then why do you fight? Why do you still fight? <laughs> In the beginning, it was, was a very difficult place. There was nothing there. There was no water, there was no any house. It was only the structure of the church. There was nobody around at the time when we started there. Nobody, because everyone was scared to live there. But we went there by faith, thinking that we will be able to bring the communities together. It was in the interest of both communities, as they said to us, that they wanted to live in peace. So we initiated some peace talks, some development between them. And then when we had the blessing of the reconstructed church, we invited the Dasanich and the Turkana, and they came together to pray under the same roof. The Trukana and Dazanet started trading with each other. There was a thriving fishing community there. And we saw lives being transformed with the money. The fishermen started saving for the studies of their children. It happened that one day, the Dazanet who was by the shores of the lake, enjoying the local brew, something got into him, and he took his gun and just shot at Trukana. When the attack happened, everything went back to zero. Wars of revenge started from then on. I failed to understand this lack of proportion between good and evil, how it takes so long to build up something that is good, like a mission, and it takes an instant to destroy all that. And the whole process that you are doing of peace is ignited and violence erupts again. Almost 40 people died that day. It was a very difficult moment because we saw death very, very close by. There were people that we had known, there were people that were living here with us. We had their children in our school and we could see how those children were becoming orphaned. The following Sunday, you go to church and you have to preach about love. How do you preach love where 40 people have been killed? There's a lot of danger in Toronyang mission, especially if you try to work only with one community. It's a, it's a boil. I will send Anne and she will be okay. Okay? This mission is not a neutral mission. I don't consider ourselves that we are neutral. We are not neutral because we do take sides. We take the side of Christ.
the side of peace, the side of announcing the gospel. So the idea was to bring children from the both divide into a boarding facilities, to make them interact between themselves to live the Christian faith and to know that life is valuable and that can only be done from a very early stages of our lives. And in so doing, I think we can create up people who really belong to Christ. And if we can give them the best education that we can afford, they'll be able to also have other opportunities in life and they will not only be closed up because that's exactly what makes them fight. How many people want to become priests? Very good, very good, very good. How many people want to become doctors? We have a dream that in 10 years, these children, when they go back to their societies, they will say that that Dasinich is my brother, that Trukana is my sister, that there's no difference between a Dasinich person and a Trukana person. Peace for me is the key to everything. Without peace, there won't be any development. Peace will be able to make us achieve the next goal, which is that of a celebration. Living in peace, playing together, dancing together, that is what we need to aim at. Toronyang is one of the most wonderful places for me. Even though there might be misery, there is joy and there is such passion. It's hard to explain exactly why we do what we do. We are not as brave as we think we are. And I think amid all this suffering, God is with us. When you meet somebody who is sick and who needs our attention, I mean, that for me is an image of Christ. Those are the moments that you realize that Christ is still in Golgotha and is crying for us to pull him away from the cross. And those are the moments that you jump out and you take the car and you run to collect whoever is sick without even thinking. It's a parasite infection, so it has to be uh, contained by antibiotics and see whether our nurse can, can alleviate her because she's in a lot of pain right now. We can be generous with the things that we have. And I don't just mean material things. If you have time, be generous with your time. Spend time for those who are in need. People will help us to pay for a classroom. But how can we have a classroom without teachers? Choose the road less traveled by. It's the most noble thing that we can do because it's to help the world become a better place, to bring Christ to the people, to make sure that Christ is heard and seen and felt in the most remote corners of the world as it is here. And the moments of glory that we receive when a child smiles and when a child has been healed, those are the moments that we hold on to. And when I remember all our friends who have been killed, I cannot stop fighting for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. <laughs>